it was really just a full breakdown, you know, everything that you need to learn. Basically the A to Z. From where to start, exactly what to do, how to do it, all the systems, the programs. The resources and things that were given throughout the training was just phenomenal. What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. Welcome to the Deal Desk. Uh, if you're first time watching, welcome. You can submit your leads for me to call live at the reitoolbox.com. I go and jump on these. I make these live calls. I get on them. I wanted you um, to listen to this call. As you know, you know I've also been making live calls and I speed to lead. And I want to share this recording with you of this lead I called because this is the kind of seller that kind of throws every kind of scenario at you. And I want you to see how I respond, overcome some objections, and see how it plays out. All right. So <clears throat> if you don't know about I Speed to Lead, make sure you check them out. Okay. I Speed to Lead. Great company. It's like a buffet of motivated sellers. You get to pick and choose what you want. So let me go ahead and share this. And uh, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to this lead. Pay close attention to the things he says and what I say back. Okay. That's going to be very important because you will talk to a lot of sellers um, just like this gentleman. So let's pull them up here. All right. Let me press play. Check this out. Hello. Hello, Nabi? Yes. Hi, my name is Steve, and I saw you put some information on our website uh, in regards to your property on Bayside Drive. Are you still looking to sell that property? Yes. Okay, great. Did I catch it at the time? No, no, it's okay. Cool. Okay, perfect. So uh, my process is actually very simple. I just want to ask you a few questions about it. I'll go in the valley the area right on the computer to see what I can offer you. And it takes about seven minutes. Is that okay? Go for it. Perfect. Now, just to let you know, we are a real estate investment company, so we don't buy every property we look at. So if I'm not a good fit, you know, I won't waste your time. I'll just let you know up front. And uh, we have real estate agents just in case we're not a good fit, okay? No problem. Perfect. So I was looking here. Um, it looks like... Uh, needs a little bit of landscaping, owner-occupied, you've had the property 10, 14 years. Um, can you tell me a little what, bit more specifically where, about where, the condition? Where do you get your information from? I see the information that was put on the website here. Okay, what's your uh, company's name? My company name is Zoom Home. Oh. You filled out some uh, some information on one of the web forms we had out. I don't recall the Zoom, but anyhow. So, okay, it's, uh, uh, the information that you have is wrong. Uh, I have uh, full, full actually, uh, landscaping. My landscape is perfect. I have uh, pavers, and I have plants, and I have uh, trees, and I have all the good stuff, and lights as well. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, because that's what you said first thing, the landscape. Mm -hmm. And then the house is uh, four bedrooms, three and a half baths. Four bedrooms, three and a half baths. Yes, two mattresses. Got it. Okay, so okay. let me... So, that's so strange. Yeah. I'm pulling up on these tax records. I always like to confirm this because sometimes these tax records are just r wrong. Let me confirm... So you are getting it from the tax record or from... My no, I have I have information you put here, but it says the address is 800 South Bayside Drive, Tampa, Florida. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So on 800 South Bayside Drive, it says owner name is Linda Clark. Yes. Um, okay. Is this uh, somebody related to you, I'm assuming? Yes, she's my girlfriend. Okay, perfect. Yeah, the tax record says this is two bedroom, two bath. I guess that's incorrect. <laughs> Correct, yes. Yeah, okay, so let me fix that um, on my notes here. It's four bedroom, three bath, and then it says the square footage is 2,028 square feet. Does that sound about, sound about right? No, it's, uh, I think it's 3,204. 
And is that heated, like livable, or total uh, buildings will perch? No, heated. Got it. I'm surprised they're that inaccurate. That's why I was like oh. confirming. Okay, perfect. So, um, yeah, tell me a little bit more about it. You know, how old is the roof, the AC, bathroom uh, scale? Yeah, the house has what uh, two ACs, one for upstairs, one for downstairs. Okay. And there's a mini split unit in the living room as well. So, say that again? Like, mini split unit. Oh, okay, perfect. Mini split unit, okay. So there are three ACs, you can say. And then uh, okay. brand new kitchen. Brand new kitchen. And then, and then the uh, roofs. One is about 10 years old, one is about two years old, and one is about, I don't know, as long as the house was. I'm not really sure how old is the third one. I have three level roof. Three level roof. Okay. Yes. So this isn't a triplex, it's just a three story property. Okay. Yeah, and no, it's not three story, it's two story, but it's built somewhat different. Okay. Gotcha. But anyhow, so yeah. Okay. No problem. All right. And then um the so you have two ACs, it's a mini split, so technically three. And as far as like the electric or plumbing, how, how's that? Yeah, good. Yeah, there is no problem. Good. Okay, perfect. Electric plumbing is good. This seems like a great house. What's got you and your girlfriend looking to sell? She has a house and she wants me to move into her house. Oh, okay. So looking she, has a, she has a house somewhere. Okay, well, that's convenient. Is this, um, is it currently 10 occupied or vacant or? I am actually living here just out, you know, because it's empty. I mean, Got not it. empty, but it's vacant. Okay, perfect. And then it's um, in, a, in a good living, livable condition. Right. And I don't know if you know, but from my house, you can see some water. Which is yeah, good. that's next to Beach Park Isles over there. Yeah. Pretty familiar with that. Okay. Um, perfect. So let me take a look here. And then if you and your girlfriend got an offer that made sense to you both, what kind of time frame, uh, were you guys looking at like a week, a month, a couple of months? When you can finish, when you can close, that's good. Okay. Um, all right. And then I'm trying to look around some similar properties and just to confirm, this is built 1951. Is that accurate? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Perfect. At least I got that right. <laughs> Good. Good. Um, did you have any ideas to what you and your girlfriend think the property currently might be worth or what you're looking to at least sell for? I'm not sure. Uh, I want, we, what we want is a fair offer. Right. Yeah, I'm trying to look at some similar ones. So I'm going to have to move a few things around. And that's why I would like to confirm with the homeowners because uh, tax records aren't always accurate and it kind of throws off the data on the computer. Right. So when I look at similar properties, it, it's, I want to make sure I'm comparing apples to apples. I don't want to look at anything completely different. So just confirm it's, you said about three, uh, 3,000 and three hundred right? Yeah, 3,204. 3,204 heated. Okay, perfect. All right, let me take a look around here. Some similar ones. It's a it's a great area, um, and it's a corner lot here, right off of Swan, as well. Swan and West Shore. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, um, since these numbers are a little bit different, I'm gonna have to adjust a few things on the computer here just to make sure I'm looking at comparing it, and then. The four bedroom, three bath, are any of those, um, were those like additions to the property? No. Okay. That well, just, it was just I mean, like the old owners may have ad added the uh, living room. I think it mm -hmm. used to be, I'm not sure. I think it used to be, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like a sunroom and then they made a living room. Mm -hmm. The old yeah, ones. Yeah, like a sunroom. Yeah. Okay. 
Are you familiar um, with North A Street? Uh, I think, I don't know. North A Street? Mm -hmm. North A Street. It's, um, it's not too far. It's a couple blocks right there. And it's still in the same area, Beach Park. Um, I don't think that's close no. to Seasons 52. Oh yeah, okay, okay, yeah. All right, yeah. So I'm yeah, looking I know what here. I'm trying to look at some yeah. similar properties. I see one on. Uh, let me see North A Street. I see four four two one, West North A Street. This one looks like it's sold for four hundred ninety three thousand dollars and five hundred. I want to confirm this here built. Make sure it's not like too old or new construction. I want to make sure I'm looking at similar stuff. And then, oh, this is about 2004, actually. Yeah, I wouldn't really want to look at that. Right. What's that? Which is new, huh? New. I mean, you yeah, know. it's newer. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to compare it to that because the newer, obviously, is just a little bit more valuable. Um, and then I want to look at things that aren't renovated as well. I want to look at fair condition because, you know, as an investment company, we make money if we buy it, we renovate it. And then we put it back on the market or we rent it out. And then one thing I like to ask every homeowner I speak with, is this something that you and your girlfriend, are you both looking to sell and just get um, like all the cash at once? Or is this something you're open to taking monthly payments on? No, we like finance. to get cash. Move okay, on. just cash. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, perfect. It'll make things a little bit easier. Um, do you know where West Beach Park Drive is? Oh, uh, yes. Well, I mean, I'm familiar with this area. I've lived yeah. here for 10 years. So. Oh, wow. Okay. So you're very familiar. There's another property here, uh, 4402 West Beach Park Drive. This one's also corner lots, walking distance. This one sold for $480,000 uh, March 4th, 2022. Um, How big 1955. is it? The house is... 2148 32 Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's very interesting because some of these, I don't want to look at stuff that's too old or too new. I also don't want to look at stuff that's much smaller, much bigger. And also the lot okay. size. I will tell you something. Yeah. I will tell you something. Mm -hmm. What you are looking for in Beach Park is. This is where he tries uh, up. He tries selling me. He tries selling me, but I stick to my guns. But you do want to hear people out. I'll talk more about this after the call. What you are really far away from where I am. Far away in the sense that the property value dif is different between North Kennedy and South Kennedy. Okay. It is still Beach Park, but North Kennedy is way lower. Okay. In the valley. And then when you look at uh, uh, West Shore, which I am on at this point, with Lawrence One, right? Mm -hmm. If you look on the uh, north side, okay, is actually cheaper or less expensive, uh, the value at least, uh, than the one on the west side, with, which I am at. Uh, so mm -hmm. I'm closer to the water, but Right, like you know, I'm, I'm across the from from across the street from me. The value drops a little bit. Okay, so what mm -hmm. you want to look for, and with all due respect, I mean, I know that you have a computer and you are doing like your due diligence, and you don't have to give me a, a time or you don't have to make me an offer or anything. Uh, you can uh, do your due diligence in your own time and stuff like that. I'm not gonna hurry. <clears throat> But I think the, like, you know, the 400 and the four, you know, four twenty one hundred square foot is not a fair value to me. Okay. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not saying that's what we would pay you. I mean, I, I've been right. doing this yes. for a while, especially in this right. area. We've done new construction. I don't want to cross okay. North Kennedy. When, when you, yes. When you buy my property, I tell you there are two things that will increase the property. Mm -hmm. uh the property value in my house which i left on purpose just in case 
somebody wants to buy and make money. Okay. And that is the property has a lot of uh, what they call it, land. I mean, it's 8,712 8, square foot. Mm -hmm. In the back side of it, there is enough for a swimming pool. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the property doesn't have uh, uh, like a fence on the street. Okay. This actually decreases the value, it doesn't increase the value, right? So you put a fence for like $2,000 and you put the proper, uh, like a, uh, what do you call it? A uh, swimming pool in the house, right? Uh, for like 35, 40, 50,000, whatever it is. Okay, this will increase value by about $150,000 right there. Another thing is, from where I'm sitting right now, I can see the water, okay? Granted, it is green, so you can't, unless you have, like uh, you've lived here, you know that it is the water, but I can see the water. Mm. And, okay, so I'm like about maybe 300 from the water, right? Mm -hmm. If someone buys the house and pursues just simply pursues uh, having a duct, like a ship duct or like a boat yard of your boat, uh, boat duct on the right. water. If you can have that for one or two boats, I don't know, you know, that, that would be about maybe uh, 35 to six, 60, 70 thousand dollars. I don't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. That will increase the value of your house by 150 again. So, you are talking about two minor things. I mean, not minor, minor, but minor enough, if you are mm -hmm. an investor, to increase the value by $300,000. Where did you okay. get those numbers from about the value of the, the ramp? And I'm just curious. What? The value of what? The the value of those two things you just stated. Where, where did you get that number from, just out of curiosity? Because I was shopping for uh, a fence and I actually got it for like sixteen, seventeen hundred, mm -hmm. uh, and even less than that. But uh, um, at least about so I, I said two thousand or mm -hmm. you know two thousand five hundred. It's not really that that uh, very important. The, the accuracy, like, but the estimate is there. And then right. the swimming pool is I had somebody who wanted to buy the house. And he investigated about the swimming pool, and of course, depends depends on the size and the, you know, what have you. And mm -hmm. so the, he was quoted like uh, for a smaller pool, thirty five, and for a bigger pool, I think uh, fifty. So, but the adding I'm, pool to it, yes. But I'm not sure. I mean, that's like he told me. This is what he was thinking. Right. Okay, so. I mean, it's fair to say that fifty thousand dollars will make you a pool, you know, mm -hmm. or I think you no. Know. So, and then the uh, the boat. I'm not sure, but I was told again uh, by one of my neighbors that uh, he had his boat duct, like you know, ramp or whatever you call it. Uh, mm -hmm. It cost him fifty thousand. However, as I'm giving you this information, this these figures, but they are not my figures. I'm like uh, here, say you can say, okay, they could be a little bit more, they could be a little bit less. Okay. You said the boat ramp. But, yes. Where would you put the boat ramp? On the on the water, right where I I can see it. You know, I mean, my neighbors have it. Yeah, and but that. Um... I'm, yeah, I know what you're talking about, but that right. that land on there, um, I think you would have to speak with the city unless it's owned by somebody specific. No, that land that land I'm looking at right now belongs to the city. Mm. Okay, belongs to the city. So you talk to the city, right? I actually tried to talk to the city uh, various times. 
and the oh, old girl. what? Oh, oh, thank you. I <laughs> like you know what the bing bong is. You know, yeah. ping pong, yeah. the ball, right? Tennis <laughs> ball. Mm-hmm. You go from here to there, and that person sends you there, and that person. I got to the point where I thought that no one wants to work. However, mm-hmm. if someone knows a little bit more than I know, because I'm a simple person, they will get to the point of it, and they will get granted uh, space. And, uh, <laughs> you know, last. Two weeks ago, I had a guy who came here, and he actually wanted to, if I had a Botan, he wanted to rent it from me, mm-hmm. you know? So, uh, so I, I mean, I'm just saying. So, But my neighbor said he, he did his maybe a long time ago for 50000 you know? So I'm, I'm not sure. But I can see, like, you know, a boat right now, and like for my neighbors, and I can see spaces that the city can allocate for us. You know, I am on sort of water, you know, and so a little bit push. I know a guy that can actually help me, but I'm, I was not like very, very, very hard on this. I know a guy that actually can uh, like direct me in the right direction. But I was, you know, I thought, okay, maybe if somebody wants to invest, Maybe that's a, a jewel, you know, because you know how many people want to have a house with a boat ramp on it or close to it. Yeah, especially in this area here. Yes. Hey, yes. I had a question for you. I, I was looking on, um, I see some photos on Zillow here. Are these by like a property management company or these recent RPM? No, or before I, before I, what? 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 Oh, it just what says on the post? pictures, uh, RPM Florida portfolio it says. What's RPM? What's that? What What is RPM? Oh, I don't know. I'm looking at your house on Zillow and I have some photos. Oh, okay. but yeah, I yeah. I put, I put, I, no, I, uh, this is, uh, like, well, I put the photo on Zillow. I was trying to rent it at one time. And so, but then I took it out and uh, I borrowed it. Uh, Photos from one of the realtors that came and took photos for me. Okay. So, it says, um, it has a watermark on the photo. It says RPM Florida Portfolio. I'm not sure what's, I, to be honest with you, I don't know what's RPM. Yeah, I don't know. Or if you just look up the house on Zillow, I see some photos. Yes. But if I you would look at, um, just click on any of them, it says that. So I don't know if that was like a property management thing. I see the bathrooms are renovated, kitchen yes. renovated. I, I told you I was, uh, mm-hmm. I wanted to rent the house at one time, but also these people, <laughs> I signed with them. I think it's mm-hmm. uh, them. I mm-hmm. signed with them and uh, they said, oh, okay. So they assigned it to this lady and uh, the lady will call me and say, I'm going to show this house for somebody and I will be in the house. So I'll say, okay. So about half an hour before she go, she comes, I will go out and sit in my car across the street or something because um, mm-hmm. I don't have any place to go and she will not come. Okay. And then she will uh, call me and she say, oh, we just finished. And I'm sitting there. <laughs> <All right. Wow. laughs> so I, like my girlfriend said, she said oh, are you sure? I'm like, yeah. I'm sure. I mean, I want to. And then, then like, uh, about like a month, she, she actually like, uh, called me like about four or five times and mm-hmm. no one will show up. And then she would go, Oh, they didn't like it. Or, you know, the price is, uh, we have to drop the price. I don't know. What. Uh, anyhow. So eventually I said, no, I don't want to, I don't want to, I want to cancel. Right. Mm, yeah. Suddenly she comes out and she says, No, I have people. And I said, Screw you, I'm not doing this. People for you. what? To rent. She, was, she couldn't close on it? No, like, you know, like she kept lying. And, and then she, when I uh, wrote to her and I said, We are canceling, we are not going to rent anymore. And mm. then she, like, a couple of days later, she said, You cannot close, you cannot. 
uh, cancel because I already have uh, people that want to rent. And I told her, hey, uh, you know, uh, no, I don't think that you do because every time, uh, like, uh, <laughs> yeah. you promise and I will be outside and you will say, yeah, they didn't like it, they, you know, and you actually don't bring anybody. So, right. anyhow. So that's okay. It. It was, well, what I'm going to do. Um, yes. I want to run this by my partner because he buys about 10 to 15 properties in this zip code. He's a lot right. more okay. familiar with it. Um, yeah. He likes this area. Now, one thing he always asks for, you know, if we can cover the closing costs, fees, commissions, all that, and we could really close, you know, on a time frame that works best for you as long as it's a clean title. Um, I mean, what kind of price range were you and your girlfriend at more or less? And I don't, you don't have to give me an exact number that, you're going to stay at, but I at least want to, you know, bring this in with more or less a figure that as investors, it's like, we don't want to waste your time if we're just too far apart. I I don't really, I can't give you any, any prices. If, yeah. Well, you know, if you like, you can evaluate and then you say, okay, this is what we can pay you. And if it's too far, I will just tell you, hey, you know, we are wasting our time. And if it's not too far, we can negotiate. Yeah. And our, our office is actually located in Tampa. If if we wanted uh, to take a look at that with like walk the house with you, would that be possible? Yeah. Okay. Well, what's your schedule like usually? Maybe that'd be better for him. Uh, let's first sort of like go near what is the value of the house. You know, yeah. what is before you guys can come and, you know, you waste my time and your time. You know what sure. I'm saying? Sure, let's of like so uh, be close to, them. yeah, We uh, if we can be close somewhere, you know, uh, and then we can like arrange for you to come and see the house and, and uh, you know, do whatever it is that you have to do. I, of course, I mean, you know, if you guys are buying a house or investment, you cannot buy it just based on pictures. Right, we always take a look uh, at it no matter what. One thing right. is we just always um, try to see where we're at as far as numbers. Because it's right. hard to, you know, it's hard to come up with an exact offer without looking at it. But I'm going to run by them. This property is pretty diverse. You have some properties renovated, like that are in the millions. Some that are in as this condition, eight hundred, nine hundred thousand. And obviously, as an investor, we can't be anywhere near those prices because that's what we would sell it for. But I'm going right. to um, run some numbers with him, and then okay. maybe I can give you a call back. Yeah, before you go any further, since we are uh, talking at least token numbers. Uh -huh. I've had an offer of uh, 1 million and 1 dollar. 1 million and 1 dollar. Oh, wow. Which is sort of funny because the guy initially made an offer of 950. Yeah. And I said, wow. I will not sell it more than for less than a million. Right. And like five minutes later, he sent me a text or no, an email. And he said, uh, okay, one million, one million, one dollar. Mm -hmm. So because I said not less than one million, which was funny. But uh, yeah. I, did, I kind of like uh, the market at the time was going up really fast. And I didn't know if it was yeah. wise, you know. So anyhow. So I'm telling you, so any offer less than a million, I will not be taking. I appreciate you letting me know that. That at least, yeah. you know, I'll be very upfront with you and I'll always tell yeah. you if we're just too far apart or not before we even go out there. I do want to yeah. make sure that we crunch numbers because he yes, does yes, more yes. of the renovation side and I yes. think um, you'll look into it. You don't need a lot of renovation in this house, but right. you, need, you need a lot of uh innovation yeah you know? it's already renovated this probably makes yes. a better rental i think 
if we add value and then rent it out, I think that probably be something you'd be more interested in. But then again, I would have to run this by him. Yeah. Uh, to make okay, sure. no problem. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, we'll talk soon. I appreciate your time. What's your name again? My name is Steven. I'm with Zoom Home Offer. I believe you actually filled out the web form. When we, we do different campaigns, but you filled out a web form called, I think, Hedge Fund Offers was a campaign. And then that connects to our company. And we're right here in, in Tampa, uh, over okay. there in the Seminole Heights area. It's about 30 minutes away from uh, where you're at, that community over there. You guys can come as friends, not as investors, visit, have coffee and stuff like this. That's fine with <laughs> That's fine with us too. <laughs> you know, we appreciate that. Okay. But I'll, uh, I'll talk to them and then we'll crunch the numbers. We'll talk soon, okay? Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. All right. So, uh, so with this lead, it was a long conversation, but, you know, at first I thought he was asking, uh, I thought he was asking too much, but I had to really look into the numbers. So a few things I want, a few takeaways that I want you to notice from that conversation is the first thing is when I spoke with that seller, he, he was not on the tax records, right? So in prop stream, it showed a different name. If you guys are in a conversation with somebody, you always, always need to confirm um, what relationship that person has. How are they affiliated with the person, the tax records? In this case, it was his girlfriend, right? He seemed pretty savvy, but you, you never know. So you have to start, you know, always asking questions, always confirm that you're speaking with the right person. And just because he's not the owner of the property doesn't mean that he's not the decision maker. Sometimes uh, some family members, relatives, or you know, spouse or whatever. Sometimes they're gonna, they don't want to deal with it, and they uh, assign that responsibility to somebody else that they trust. So as long as you're speaking with the right person, that's the decision maker. They have a huge influential part with the person on the records. Okay. Um, another thing is, you know, you have to think quick on the phone. So. One thing that I do always like to do is I have to confirm the square footage. Every conversation I have with homeowners, a lot of times they'll say, oh, the property is actually much bigger than that, right? I always ask for how many bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage, right? Because that could be different. Tax records may be incorrect. Okay, so on the tax records and Zillow is two completely different things, but they didn't add or remove anything. It was just incorrect. So I always confirm that it's the accurate square footage. In this case, it was actually bigger, right? So when I'm looking at comps, because what PropStream does, it sets um, specific criteria by default. But if the tax, rec tax records are incorrect, that kind of throws everything else. So you have to think quick on the phone. If he tells you it's X, Y, and Z, you have to adjust accordingly to make sure you're looking at reasonable comps. Because even though you're anchor pricing, right? I anchor price no matter but no matter what, but when I give a range, I want to make sure I'm looking at something that makes sense. If I'm looking at the wrong square footage, I'm shooting myself in the foot and it's the wrong thing, right? Um, one thing he was also saying was, yeah, if you added a pool, you added a boat ramp, this is a very interesting neighborhood. Like the boat ramp would be across the street on a piece of land that belongs to the city. He said he spoke with the city, but he started adding all these things and I always like say that that's basically when sellers are trying to really hard sell you on how valuable the house is and everything, right? When in reality, uh, they haven't sold it yet. I mean, he had an offer for I think about a million dollars or a little bit underneath that. The house is probably worth 1.2, um, between a million to 1.2, somewhere around that range. But when people say, yeah, you know, the value uh, can increase by this much if you added this and this much, you have to challenge that and ask, hey, how'd you get to those numbers, right? What facts do you have that justifies why it's this specific number, this amount of value, okay? And sometimes they're savvy about it. Sometimes they're not. 
And regardless whether it's this person or not, you're always going to talk to somebody that thinks that since the grass is so green, the value drastically increases. That's not always the case. It's actually – it's never the case. The, the, the grass could be purple. It doesn't decrease the value or increase the value, okay? So make sure that when people say, yeah, it's more value if you had this, this, and this, ask for facts, the, you know, the support that uh, that claim that they're making. Okay. Stick to the process. Um, you know, the conversation was lengthy. He was saying different things, but you know, I talked comfortable, slow with him, uh, made sure that he understood me and I understood him. A lot of things that he said, even though I disagreed with it, I just kept quiet, right? Anytime you're trying to, um, anytime you're trying to talk to somebody, and uh, you know that they are wrong, they're saying the wrong thing, or you, you, and you disagree with them, you want to make sure that you just keep quiet and that you let them talk and vent about all they want, and then you state your case. I, I always talk about this when it comes to overcoming objections. Um, anytime you're overcoming objections, you want to make sure that you let the people talk. Whether, whether you know that they're right or wrong, make sure that that's the case. Okay, uh, let's see here. <clears throat> uh oh, can you guys see me? Some of you guys saying the internet crashed or whatever. Okay, hopefully you can see me. All right, so let's keep going. Um, something that I did ask him was if you know if he was open to taking payments or not. Is he open to taking payments or not? And it, there's no right or wrong answer to that, but I want to make sure that whatever he says to, I agree, right? If somebody doesn't want to take monthly payments, it's not open to creative financing. They say, no, I want all the cash up front. I'm not going to try to convince them to do that unless I see it beneficial for both of us, right? Obviously for the investor, if that's an option that you'd like to do as an exit strategy, by all means do that. But if somebody has... Uh, their mind on something specific, then, you know, you have to kind of agree with them. And not everybody is going to be a good fit for what you're offering, right? We offer cash offers, listings, you could do creative financing, you know, subject to all that stuff. But some homeowners just have their sight on one thing and that's what they want. Okay. Um, keep quiet, let them talk and take time with your seller. You know, at the end of the, the end of the conversation, he said that he wanted me to come over there, not as an investor, but as a friend and talk and have coffee and all that stuff. This could be a great appointment, actually. This is a perfect example of a good appointment because it's not somebody that, you know, even though they said they're ready to sell ASAP, they're I could tell that they're just chilling. They're they're not really they're serious about selling quick. But they, they really try to sell you on the best points of the house. And then something you also notice is on Zillow, it looks like a property management company posted some photos. He said he took, but he was unfamiliar with the company. These are all things that if you ever go on an appointment, it's really important to um, bring some facts to the table. I see some questions here. Um, thank you for everything you do. Absolutely. What? Do I do if I can't find a comp that's half a mile around the area or the square foot footage under over the square footage of the property? I'm comping. So when it comes to uh, comps, right? If you're if you're looking for comps, make sure you take a look at what is your criteria that's set. Like if you use prop stream, give or take, it's like around 300 square feet. But sometimes if you don't see any comps, right? You could actually make sure your filters are um, – you don't have anything too deep going on like with cash comps. Look at flips comps, cash comps. Look at ARV comps. When you're anchor pricing, look at everything. If you don't see anything in the area, I always look for the highest selling properties because uh, sometimes we can click on the transaction history, okay, and we can see what the investor bought that for. Um you know, my rule of thumb is if I am talking to somebody and their house is in the middle of nowhere, okay, there's no cash comps, there's no ARV comps, okay, um, 
this is something that you have to be careful with because hold on a second. Everybody said my internet crashed. You guys hear me? See me? Uh let's see. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm gonna keep going. Maybe on the replay it'll it'll show correctly. I apologize for inconvenience. Some of you guys can see me, some of you can't. But uh what was I saying? So my rule of thumb is if the property is out in the middle of nowhere, there's no cash comps, there's no Airbnb comps, there's like nothing. You can go back two years, there's still nothing. That does happen sometimes. And you got to keep in mind, regardless of what you lock that deal up at, it, it's going to be hard to sell because there's not really much activity in that area. So I do two things when it comes to that. The first thing I do is I want to make sure that I get this at a price that absolutely makes sense with the especially with these kind of properties you can it cannot be a tight deal right in this market you shouldn't be going for tight deals in general right so um make sure that you get it at a deep discount good rule of thumb is 50 60 percent of Airbnb, or uh, of the you could even look at the zestimate if you want as long as you're really deep discount the second thing i do is i like talking to a local agent OK, just because there's no flips going on in the area doesn't mean that somebody is not going to buy it. OK, so I like linking up with local agents. OK, you can Google some agents around that area and then you give them a call. Let them know what you have and see what they can help you with. Come up with a commission split that they're happy with. OK. Just make sure that um, you get it at a deep discount. That's super important. Um, how would you go about the phone call as a first time call? Like, hi, I work with investors looking to buy properties in the area or just say, hey, my partner and I are looking to buy properties. So I'm assuming you're talking about cold calling. If it's the first first contact, I mean, the first thing I do is say, hey, Bob, All right, let's say Bob, you know, is, is the owner. Hey, Bob, who's this? My name is Steven. I was calling in regards to your property in 123 Main Street. What about it? Well, the reason for my call is our company just bought a few properties in the area, and we wanted to reach out to you personally to see if you might be interested in selling yours for an offer. So when you're cold calling somebody and it's the first contact, you have to make sure, number one, it's the right person. All right. You want to pique their interest. Hey, Bob, who's this? Yes, Bob, my name is Steven. I was calling regards to your property, 123 Main Street. You know, if they're curious about what's going on about their house, if it's them and it's their property, they're going to want to know who you are and why you're calling them. And that's going to open the window to talk more about that. And I actually talk more about that on my course. There's going to be a section there um, exactly on cold calling the right way. There's a lot of ways to cold call, but the thing is, guys, like, homeowners, you're not going to be the first person to call them. They're going to get tons of calls, not just from real estate investment companies. They'll get calls for car extended warranty. They'll get calls for winning a free vacation. They'll get calls for timeshare and all this other stuff. So, you know, they can typically sense this is another sales call or telemarket or whatever. So you have to stand out a little bit different. And the way to do that is by making sure that you ask receptive questions like that. Okay. Hopefully that helps. Um, all right, cool. All right, cool. So let's move on to the next one. This property is in Dayton, Ohio. Okay. Dayton, Ohio. Let me see here. All right. So this property is in Dayton, Ohio. This one right here. Okay. Looks completely different from this angle. All right. So 
um, where a prisoner need and none is currently rented. They're asking $138,000. Excellent condition. Five bedroom, four bathroom, 3,000 square feet with finished basement, new roof, 2013, HVAC 2021, kitchen redone 2013, bathrooms redone 2021. Great notes, by the way. What's the reason for selling? Tired of being a landlord, wants to focus on restaurant and bar business he has. He says, I ain't got no time for no, no house. I want to do a restaurant and a bar business. Okay, I wonder how Moda, you know, I don't really talk to many people that, um, you know, if somebody wants to reshift their focus, it, it could be a big pain to manage something that you don't want to set your goals with. Like if you want to start a restaurant and bar business and you don't, you know, you have a rental property, um, I'm curious to see what his relationship is with the tenants. That's what I'm really curious he said he's tired of being landlord. So let's give this person a call. And uh, let's see what happens here. Let me see here. What's their name? Always know the person's name before you call them. <laughs> Always know the person's name. All right, so Rob, Robert, Robert. Let's see. Is that him? Or her? I don't know who that is. Well, that's their tenants, I'm assuming. Because it's an occupied star being over, so let's see what happens. Hello. Hey, good afternoon, Robert. How you doing? Good. Um, my name is Steven. I, I believe you spoke with my partner a while back in regards to your property on Fourth Street. Were you still looking to sell that property? Yeah, I don't even know why I'm getting this phone call, man. Uh, I didn't put this property for sale or nothing. You didn't speak with Omar? No. It says here he put, unless this is the wrong number, he said here, you're tired of being landlord. Do you want to focus on a restaurant and bar business? Um, yeah, it's not. What was that? That's not me, man. Oh, you're not, you're not Robert? Nope. Oh. Ah. Okay. Well, did you have any other prop? Did you have any properties you might be looking to sell for an offer? Yeah, the right offer comes around. Okay. Did I catch it a good time? Yeah. Okay. Well, what would be the uh, the address of the property that you might be looking to sell? I'll, I'll give you an offer. Okay, well, anyways, um, well, I'll have you on the phone. I mean, my process is actually very simple. I, I'm just going to ask you a few questions about the property, and then what I'll do is I'll go into Valley at the area right here on the computer, see what I can offer you. It takes about seven minutes. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, perfect. And just to let you know, we are a real estate investment company, so we're not always the best fit. So if, if I'm not a good fit, I won't waste your time uh, or my time. I'll let you know up front. And then, um, you know, if you are so interested in something, we have a great team of agents just in case, okay? Yeah. Perfect. So, um, what can you tell me about the house? You know, how many bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage? Tell me a little bit about, you know, about the condition. Uh, uh, condition is um, almost near 
I would say parental worthy. Probably got two days worth of work. Um, but it's got a, you know, new furnace, new tile flooring, tile countertops, new sink. Uh, okay. But, um, I mean, it's got four bedrooms, one bath. No major damage to any structure. Actually, the roof's getting repaired right now. Okay. Uh, you said it needs that, a new few things, like the furnace tile floor. It has a new furnace tile floor and all that. Yeah. It needs new or it has new? Has new. Oh, has new. Okay, perfect. And um, and you said the roof is being worked on right now. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. And it's uh, porch roof. The porch roof, the trusses, or not the trusses, but the uh, mm. rafters and raster tails are bad. So they replaced those, and then they're putting a new OSB up because they just use like slab wood before in the twenties, mm -hmm. which is what I'm guessing. The last time that the uh, roof was structurally fixed, mm -hmm. um, it's asphalt, of course, but um, other than that, that's it. Okay, and uh, it's currently 10 occupied, right? Yeah, and how are the tenants? The good tenants pay on time? Oh, no, it's unoccupied. Uh, like I said, it's got a couple of days of work before it can be even run already. And I'm um, gotcha. doing the work as we. Okay. And um, any issues with the electric or plumbing? No. Um, I actually just replaced some electrical um, because uh, somebody had it ran with an electric cord as opposed to. Mm -hmm. You know, the hot water tank or electrical cords, the electric box as opposed to a true line. So, mm -hmm. fix that the other day. Um, the plumbing, it used to leak around the sink, but we put in new new plumbing there. Um, and then just a couple other things, you know, here and there. They could use, they could use a new, uh, they're not new trim, but some sanding done on the trim and uh, around all the windows and all the trim. Not, not upstairs, just downstairs. Because uh, I did upstairs. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, um, you know, the stairs and the trim can be sanded and polyurethane and stained. Okay. It seems like a, a decent property. What, what's got you um, open to selling it? What are you looking to sell? Uh, really, man, you know, if it's the right offer is all I'm really at with it. You know what I mean? It's just um, I'm more interested in cryptocurrency mining now as opposed to rental properties. So, mm -hmm. But, uh, one thing I did fail to mention is probably going to need new windows because uh, they are the original windows. I mean, that's three thousand dollars there. So, oh, nice. Okay. And uh, what kind of time frame? Were you know, if you got an offer that made sense, what kind of time frame were you looking to sell? About a week, a month, a couple months? I would say, man, uh, you throw me an offer with with the work that's going to be completed because they're about done with the roof. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That cost me $1,200 and some change. Um, the tile work cost me over, uh, over, over 12 to 15,000, actually 20,000 because of all the work that was involved in just doing the tile work. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's half the house value right there. I mean, uh, so, I mean, it's not a great area. It's more of a rental property area. I would say you don't get a lot of home value out of that area. You get more of a rental income out of it, but you know, I'm open to offers, of course. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I'm trying to look around at some similar properties here. 
I always like confirming. It says on the tax records, it says the heated square footage is 1602. Does that sound about right? Yeah. Okay. Let me take a look around here. Um, while I'm looking around, trying to look at some similar ones, did you have any ideas to what you think it might be worth or what you're looking to at least sell for? I mean, there's a house right beside it. It's almost in comparable condition. Mm -hmm. Ours is if not better um, in some aspects, you know, a little worse than some others. Um, and that one's going for auction. But really, the houses were built almost structurally the same, mm -hmm. um, same year and everything. And it's right beside my house, and they're selling for no less than 35000 So, So, um, but I would say, you know, the house is probably worth, 65 60 i'm assuming um just a while i guess okay i mean the came in before they came they haven't done an interior inspection and the roof was bad when they did their uh appraisal i believe they came in at 55 or 52 so i mean i would say it's probably pushing 60 65 right now yeah and if if we were to buy it you know as investors we would pay cash pay closing costs, no commissions, all that. We could really close in the time frame that makes sense for you as long as it's a clean title. If we could do all that for you, what do you think would be the best price you can do? I'm not going to sit here and tell you best price. You throw me an offer and we'll go from there. You said your, your neighbor's house sold for 35 right? No, it's they are auctioning it, and the minimum reserve is 35 Hmm. Okay. Yeah, let me take a look. Are you familiar with uh, Brownlee Avenue? Right on the, it's right on the other side. It's around Medford over there. Yeah. So there's one on 2020 uh, Brownlee Avenue. This one, let me pull this up. It's sold for 55 uh, cash as is condition. I'm going to see if it's similar bedroom bathroom square footage because on the tax records for yours it says three one and a half um let me pull this up well, the, dumps, the basement could be uh made into a basement as well or into a bathroom mm -hmm. yeah this one two one half sixteen eighty eight so this one sold for fifty five thousand eight hundred dollars um the highest selling one I see here is on 2045 Medford Avenue. This one sold for $88,960. Um, What's that at? It's um, 2045 Medford Avenue. This one sold for $88,960. Yeah. Is that a duplex or is that a... No, single single family. All right. Let me look at the pictures. Mm -hmm. And then um, it looks like an as-is condition. I mean, these are selling in or between. Uh, I mean, I see some at 40. I see some at 54. Um, and then I see some on the market. They're selling around 70. And then the highest one I see here is on Medford. But as an investor, I mean, we would probably be have you have to be somewhere around that lower range just because we would renovate it, flip it. Um, but is this something that you're looking to just get a cash offer? Or is this something that you'd be open to taking payments on? With a down Definitely payment. a cash. Just a cash uh, offer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we would have to be somewhere around that 40 to 50 range in order for us to make a profit. We would flip it um, and then put it back on the market, and then we probably end up selling it somewhere around that 80,000 range. So I'm, I'm looking at some in the area. If, if you go on the other side of um, Youngston Poland Road, it's just a different – different kind of neighborhood. I don't really want to compare those next to the elementary school over there on Struthers. I'm trying to stay, you know, in your neighborhood. So 
we'd probably be somewhere around that range. Is that something that makes sense to you that you might be open to as far as a cash offer? No, no. Uh, see, I'm trying to flip it myself. So mm. um, my whole goal is to get the 80 out of it. Yeah. Because that leaves me with over. I mean, I don't have, I'm not far off from having, honestly, that house you sent me on Medford. Yeah. Aside from being first, the only thing that it has on me is the basement's painted. Mm -hmm. It's got a little bit better paint job done to it because I just have a rental paint job done to it. You know what I mean? And other than that, man, it's not really anything. It's got a, it's got a better stove, um, better sink. Um, other than that, man, it's not really got much on me. So I would yeah. say, you know, it's not being furnished, you know, so I don't know if that's just staging furnishing or if that's actual furnishing. Mm -hmm. So I would say, I would say I'm not going to sell, um, because the house is really, I would say a house is pretty comparable to mine. I've got a few hundred more square feet than it. Um, yeah, it looks like the driveway has been, been, uh, updated recently so i mean it's got that on me so i would say i would i would definitely be in the 65 70 but mm -hmm. i'm not gonna go ahead i think you're asking good price sell, i'm I, not sell it to a uh, flipper when yeah I'm myself, you know? it, it wouldn't make sense i think that's actually a, a really good price range on the open market is, is listing something that you're going to be looking forward to doing um maybe I want to get some rental income out of it because I've done a lot of updating. So I would say it's not that I would motivated. do the, um, about the time when the updating, in the first place, you know, but he's, he's the updates go out of style, I would say is what I would sell. Okay. No problem. Well, I'll let my partner know and, uh, we'll, we'll check back in with you near future and see what, you know, what happens where we're at. All righty. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Bye. You too. Bye. All right, uh, so I don't know if you guys can see me or not. So this house, he's in the middle of renovating. I think he's actually asking a decent price on the open market. I talked bad about the cash offer. He's not open to taking any credit financing, and he's not even the person I was calling in the first place. Um, you know, so uh, he, he said that that's not him. Maybe whoever submitted this lead is the wrong number. But, you know, if somebody's open to it, you never know what may happen. So even if you guys do call the wrong number, make sure you say, hey, well, I mean, well, I'll have you on the phone. Did you have any properties you might be interested in selling? He said, yes, we had a conversation. OK, so I don't know what's going to happen with this. This is definitely somebody that should be followed up with. Uh, hopefully you guys can see this. This will all be on the replay. Right. So if you had some technical difficulties, uh, probably from my end, it's strange, like everybody could see me coming in and out. But you'll be able to see on the replay. If on the replay it, it's blanked out, I'll just download and re-upload to YouTube. So that's all I had to, for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a great weekend. Take care.